you're planning to move to Canada and you have a fur baby in your home country, I know how much of a stress that can be. And you'll be surprised as to how easy and simple the entire process is. And contrary to what you'd expect, it's not even costly. The entire process costed me only $100, which is like 6,000 rupees, right? That's all that you have to spend to bring your pet from India to Canada without the help of any agency. I'll be discussing the step-by-step -step process of what needs to be done, what are the different documents that you will require. I will attach pictures of the documents so that you have a frame of reference when you're preparing the documents for your baby. And along with that, I will also share all the links uh, so that you can simply click on them and get the required information and most importantly I will also share how you can train your little baby so that the flight is a comfortable one for him Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. My name is Sophia and this is Romeo when I was planning to move to Canada, I knew that I will not be moving to the country without him. However, when I was first doing my research on how to bring a Romeo from India to Canada, there wasn't really any helpful information available. Uh, I spent a lot of sleepless nights worrying about whether I'll be able to bring him to Canada and how I can bring him. So I thought, let me share my experience, my journey, so that if you have a fur baby with you, uh, the process becomes easy for you so please stay till the end of the video so that you can get all the information that you need to travel with your fur baby I will be discussing the journey from India to Canada as that is the journey that we took however you can modify according to the requirements of your destination countries so the first step of course is to book the tickets for yourself and for your baby so before you go ahead and book the tickets what I would highly recommend recommend is go ahead and check the flying with pet requirements for your particular airline. I have heard great things about KLM, Southwest and Lufthansa. They are supposed to be very uh, pet friendly. However, since we were traveling during uh, COVID and I wanted a direct flight, we opted for Air Canada. So it's very simple. Just go and Google and search a uh, fly with pet Air Canada or fly with pet Lufthansa. The pet policy comes up go through it. Each airline has their own policy when it comes to the weight of the pet, uh, the breed of the pet, so on and so forth. For example, since Romeo is a pug and he's a snub-nosed breed, so pugs, uh, French bulldogs, all the dogs that have smashed faces like this, they are not allowed to travel in cargo because they usually have breathing issues which might get aggravated during the flight. So the best option to fly with such breeds is, is of course in Cabin. I have a small dog. I think that is the best way to travel. Uh, Romeo and I traveled in Cayman as well and, it, and it's so good because you can constantly check up on them, play with them. If they are getting agitated, you can calm them down, feed them food. I even uh, took him to the washroom a couple of times so that he can you know, walk around and relax his legs. So go ahead and check the flying with pet requirements for your airline. For Air Canada, uh, I will put the requirements in the video so that you can see uh, what are the requirements to travel with your pet in cabin uh, within Air Canada. So it's very simple actually. The weight of the pet plus carrier should be up to 10 kgs and they have uh, specifications when it comes to the dimensions of the bag. Your bag must be up to those dimensions only. Uh, ensure that we are you're meeting the bag specifications and if in in case you are exceeding uh, it's just by a couple of centimeters they however do ensure to check that the pet is comfortable within the bag wherein uh, the pet can move around stand freely or sit inside the bag uh, now once you've gone through the requirements you'll be able to understand whether your dog can fly in cabin with you or if he's of a bigger breed he might have to fly in cargo I will be discussing a uh, flying in cabin in detail because I have more first-hand experience of this and I had another friend who I had advised to fly with her dog in Cayman so this is something I have expertise on however even if you have a bigger breed and you're planning to bring them in cargo the process is almost the same
same. The first thing, of course, you will have to book a ticket. Now, when you're booking the ticket, uh, ensure that you book the aisle seat because pets are only allowed to be carried in cabin when you have an aisle seat. You cannot carry a pet in the window seat or the middle seat. Once your tickets are booked, the process starts and it's very simple. You just need to call up Air Canada customer service and tell them that you are planning to travel with your pet in cabin. At that time, they will ask you what is the total weight of the pet along with the carrier. Uh, then they will tell you the dimensions of the carrier and confirm with you if your pet carrier meets uh, those dimension requirements. I will put the dimensions for Air Canada on the screen above. Once uh, all the information is confirmed, they will uh, tell you the price for traveling in cargo or in cabin. When we flew, I think it was in December 2021, the charges was $100 for the pet to fly in cabin. If you are traveling with your dog in cargo, they will tell you the prices accordingly. Uh, once that is done, you will have to make the payment over the phone with your credit card. And that's it. The moment you've made the payment, they will send you a revised ticket. And on the ticket, you will see that it says flying with pet in cabin. This is how it will look. It, it will say pet in, uh, pet in cabin request confirmed. Now that both your flight tickets are booked, the next step is getting the crate. So when you're getting the crates, uh, there are two types of crates, hard crates and soft crates. Uh, if you're flying with your pet in cabin, if you have a small dog, it's fine. However, if your dog is on the heavier side like this fatso, then I would recommend that go for the soft carrier because the weight of that is much lesser, right? So uh, in case they do go ahead and check the weight, you will not exceed it by too much. When you're getting the pet carrier, you need to ensure that it is IATA approved because these are airline approved bags and when you're traveling with your pet uh, by air, you need to ensure that your carrier meets all the requirements by IATA. I went ahead and bought uh, Romeo's bag from Amazon. You can also go to your local pet store and ask them for an IATA carrier. Um, I think it might be cheaper uh, when you buy from a local vendor. I, however, uh, went ahead and placed my order from Amazon from this brand called Sherpa because I was doing this for the first time and I was very scared and I, this brand had a lot of good reviews about people who were trying to travel with their pet uh, by air i will leave the link down below these bags are shipped from us so it took around two to three weeks so ensure that you order the bag in advance why i really like this brand is because the bag comes with this guaranteed onboard card uh, that really helps to you know reduce your uh, stress and your worries because if you're traveling uh, with your pet on a sherpa bag it is uh, for sure iata approved and you will not be denied entry on the flight with your pet for any bag related concerns and it's very sturdy like a Romeo even now when we are traveling I carry Romeo in that bag so it's a worthwhile investment I would say now once you get your crate or your carrier bag what I would highly recommend is start training your dog to be comfortable in it because it's going to be a long flight and as per the airline policy you are not allowed to bring the pet outside of the carrier throughout the flight so imagine your pet will be in that bag from anywhere between 16 to 20 hours so it's very important that your pet is comfortable there they do not panic or they do not get stressed and that is why I think crate training is very important. Romeo is a spoiled brat, right? So he's never been crated all his life. He's allowed to get on the couch, the bed, everywhere. So when I first tried to put him in the crate, he freaked out. He couldn't wait to get out of it. And I was so scared that how will he sit in the crate for 20 hours? And that's when I started training him. So start small. So in the beginning, just keep them for 10 minutes and try to ensure that they are able to associate the crate with a happy 
memory. So for example, every time they go in the crate, give them a treat or put all their favorite toys in the crate so that they want to go inside it. And whenever they are in the crate, ensure that you're, you're talking to them, you're reassuring them, using your soothing voice so that they don't freak out. So start with 10 minutes, then gradually increase it to 20, 30, an hour and so on and so forth. I mean, towards the end, what I used to do is I used to give him treats, put him in the crate. By that time, he had become comfortable staying there for one and a half, two hours. And, and I used to simply pick up the crate and put it beside myself on the bed or on the sofa as I'm doing my own work. Towards the end, he had become so comfortable with it that, you know, while I was working and he was inside the crate beside me, he used to go off to sleep. And so please, please ensure that your dog is able to associate the crate or the carrier bag as a place of comfort and security so that when they are inside it for such an extended period of time, they do not freak out. Now that your puppy is uh, getting trained to fly, let's talk about all the documents that we will need. Now, first and foremost, you need to ensure that your dog is microchipped. Again, it's a very simple process. You can just go up to your vet and tell them that you want to microchip your dog it takes like a few seconds they just go ahead and insert the microchip on them and depending on your vet it can cost anywhere between 1500 to 2500 rupees now, and if you are in the Delhi and Gurgaon area, I would highly recommend the Niti Bagh Pet Clinic. Doctors there are very caring towards your pet, very professional. They had been Romeo's pet for over two years. For, and furthermore, another friend of mine was uh, planning to get her dog from Ahmedabad uh, to Toronto and they were facing a lot of issues and their vet was not able to prepare the documents. So, and since their flight was from Delhi, uh, they decided to go ahead and check Niti Bagh Pet Clinic and, and it's so sweet, the vet remembers uh, Romeo. So all they had to say is just get us the documents that you made for Romeo and everything was prepared. So, so yeah, if you're in the Delhi Gurgaon region, just go to Niti Bagh Pet Clinic and just tell them to prepare the documents that they made for Romeo when he flew to Canada. Ensure that you get the microchip certificate from your vet. It's very simple. It needs to have your name, your pet's name, your pet's breed, age, and the microchip number and date of birth and it should also have your vet's signature and your vet's registration number along with the date and i would highly recommend all the documents that i'll be talking about uh, please ensure that you get it stamped from your vet because that ensures uh, that the documents look authentic and valid especially when they are being uh, reviewed by the visa officers the next document you that you would require is your pet's vaccine card so like this this is romeo's vaccine card and so ensure that all your pet's vaccines are up to date like this and along with that you also need a vaccine certificate again is very similar to the microchip certificate it should have your pet's name breed age date of birth microchip number your name all the documents that i'll be talking about they need to have these details okay so i'm not going to repeat and it will have all the vaccines that your pet has uh, taken so that your dog is vaccinated against rabies and it is mentioned in his, in his or her vaccination certificate. Now, uh, along with that, you will also need a travel come vaccination certificate. Again, it has your pet's detail. It just specifies that your vet has examined your pet. Your pet is in good health. Your pet is vaccinated and he or she is fit to travel by air or by train. The prices of all these documents might vary. My vet, however, was great. And I think they charged me around $600 for all the documents, which I think was so affordable. Now, once you get all these documents comes the next step, and that is the certificate from the government of India. This is issued by the Animal Quarantine and Certification Center. And this certificate proves that your pet is allowed to travel outside the country. And this is one of the most important documents that you will need. 
Now, how do you get this document? The process, surprisingly, is very simple. You need to uh, go ahead and find the uh, closest center for the animal quarantine and certification service in your area. I was living in Delhi, so uh, the closest one was in the Chhatarpur Kapashera area. I will leave a link uh, for their website so that you can find the closest center to your home. Once you've found a center, you can either directly walk up to the center or you can also book an appointment through email they were I was very impressed by how quick they were to respond to emails so they usually respond within 24 hours so they are very professional that way I had emailed them to ask about all the documents that will be needed so if you have any doubts you can uh, just send them an email again I will write their email address down below and they usually respond I think within 24 to 48 hours and then simply walk up to their center and when uh, you go to the center ensure that you carry all these health certificates that I talked to you about and along with that you will also need two postcard size pictures of your dog carry two pictures of, uh, like this because one they will keep and one they'll give you and on the back you need to write your dog's name his his color his breed his age his microchip number and your phone number so once you have all these documents just walk up to their center uh, what I would also uh, recommend is ensure that you carry Xerox copies of all these documents because uh, I made the mistake I did not carry the Xerox copies I just carried the original and then I had to go search for a Xerox center so because they will uh, go ahead and take all the Xerox copies so ensure that you uh, carry the original and the Xerox copies of all the documents along with the photographs just walk up to the center. I, I'm sharing my experience as per Delhi. I think it will be the same across the country. So the guard met me at the front. He asked me my purpose. I told him that I want to fly with my dog from India to Canada. I, he checked if I had all the documents, which I luckily did. And then they asked me to wait. And within like 20 minutes, the vet came to examine him. Now, when the vet examines your pet, they will make him walk. They will check check if he's healthy or not. They will check all his documents. And I made a mistake that created so much stress for me. So I would ha I'm sharing it with you so that you don't have to go through that. So if you see on Romeo's uh, vaccine card, on one of the dates, uh, the vet had scribbled over it. And the vet at the animal quarantine center was so particular. He's like I can't read the date properly uh, I cannot issue a certificate for your dog so on so forth uh, I reached out to my vet then she sent me all of Romeo's records on whatsapp the pictures of all the vaccines and so on and so forth and then finally the guy agreed to issue the certificate uh, to me so please yes don't make my mistake if there is any uh, scribble or any uh, place where the vet has written over just ask them to create a new uh, card for it or, uh, or just ask them to strike off the whole thing write it again clearly and then do a small sign underneath it so that you don't have to go through what we had to however once the vet was convinced that everything is all the documents are good it was a very seamless process and they told me to wait and i waited around 30 minutes and we got this certificate and and this picture of romeo that i showed you guys they kept one and the other one they stamped it like this so that it can go in this file and these are all the documents that you need to fly with your pet from india to canada now that you have all your documents ready it is time to fly with with your pet a couple of things that i would highly suggest before you fly with your pet is a diet ensure that you don't feed him anything heavy for the last 24 hours the vet recommended that i only give him yogurt for the last 16 18 hours so that's all he had and before traveling for the flight ensure that you tire them out try and take them on a long walk for an hour or one and a half hour so that the moment they are in the flight they go off to sleep right and the more they sleep the more comfortable they'll be the less they'll stress out ensure that uh, they have done their business and the stomach is clear so because uh, there will be very limited options uh, to pee or poop on the flight 
Uh, once we uh, reached the airport, the process with Air Canada was very simple. We just walked up to the Air Canada desk uh, where you uh, do your normal flight checking, uh, the check the weight of my bags and so on and so forth. But one thing that I forgot, when you fly with your pet in Cavan, it comes as your hand baggage. So if you are flying with your pet, you will not be able to carry an additional hand baggage. You can only carry the small side bag that you have and your pet counts as your hand bag. And of course, you can carry whatever additional baggage that you have in cargo, but your in cabin baggage that you cannot uh, carry if you're flying with your pet because your pet counts as one in cabin baggage. So, uh, once we uh, reached Air Canada, they, I told them I'm flying with my pet. They went ahead and they asked for flight tickets. They didn't ask for all the other documents. They just asked for the flight ticket. And like I show, showed you guys, the flight ticket mentioned uh, pet in cabin. So they said, okay, if you're traveling with your pet, you get priority boarding like you get when you're traveling with kids. So we got that. I put a video as to how Romeo was sitting and the air hostess will come and tell you that the pet should not, should stay inside the bag throughout the journey under no circumstance are you allowed to bring your pet out. However, we're very lucky because there were two other girls uh, on our row uh, in the window seat and the middle seat and they were both dog lovers. So after a while, you know, when it became dark and everything settled down, they said that oh, the poor guy is inside, why don't you bring him out? Out. I will put a small video as to how Romeo traveled. This one traveled like a king, but you have to be very careful. And with Romeo, was very confident because Romeo is very well trained, and more than that, he's super lazy. So Romeo, he doesn't bark or he doesn't create nuisance or disturbance. Or I know he'll not jump out of my lap. I took him out. The other girls played with him a little, and then he slept on my lap like this. They usually give you a blanket, so I hid him under the blanket, and I think they thought he was a baby. So most of the flight he traveled like this i also ensured that whenever lights were on or people were awake i put him back in the crate it can get a little uh, difficult for them because they're constantly sitting they can't stretch their body or stretch their legs so what i also did is after every like six seven hours i used to uh, put him in back in the crate and carry him to the washroom and then just let him free so the washrooms are very tiny in air canada however it's still better because at least he can stretch his legs and get some comfort so and like this we have had a very comfortable flight from India to Canada. Once we reached Toronto, uh, the process was so easy, so simple. We went through the regular immigration process. I had come as an international student, so we went through the international student immigration process. And the best thing, the moment you get down at Toronto airport, there is a great pet relief area. So you can let your dog be and they can pee and poop and do all their business. And once your entire immigration process is completed, that is when uh, you go and meet the pet officer. That process also was so quick. Like I even asked the officer that, is it over? Am I good to go? He said, yeah. They will just have a look uh, at your pet. They will ask for the rabies uh, vaccine certificate and this uh, certificate from the government of India. And that's it. Within I think within three minutes, we were good to go. And ever since then, we've been exploring Canada together. And I'm so thankful and so grateful every day that this little boy is here with me. If you want a part two of what are the steps to take once you reach Canada with your pet, do let me know in the comment section below. And I hope uh, you found this video helpful and I hope it helps you uh, move from your home country to Canada with your pet. Please, please do not abandon your pets uh, just to move to a foreign country. The process is so simple. They are your best friends and your babies. Please do not abandon them. And if you have any questions about the whole process, do let me know in the comment section below. Uh, even if one pet can be with their owner because of this video, it will be so worth it for me. And if you found this video helpful, please like, comment, share and subscribe to our channel. Thank you for watching. Bye for now.